Glenn Jacobs has worked with the World Wrestling Entertainment for almost 20 years. He is well known around the world under his stage name, Kane. He has also been in a lot of different big movies and television shows. He's a libertarian or thought criminal who discovered and became a devout student of Austrian economics, as we are as well, with Lou Rockwell yesterday, the head of the Von Mies Institute, a number of years ago. He is the co-founder of the Tennessee Liberty Alliance, a free market educational organization. Glenn tries to use his fame to in pop culture to spread the message of liberty and sound economics. He's written articles for the future of Freedom Foundation, LouRockwell.com, The Daily Caller, as well as appearing on various television programs. And he joins us now. Follow him on Twitter at Jacob's Report. And he is with us today. Wow, great to have you on. I love the speech that I saw you give at the Libertarian uh, Committee uh, meeting on C-SPAN. And I would love to just give you the floor to talk about Obamacare and the attacks on free speech and the TSA now rolling out on the streets of America. Great to have you with us, sir. Great to be here, Alex. Thanks for having me. So much to talk about. What do you want to begin with? Uh, we could spend three hours talking, couldn't we? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Why, why don't we talk about Bitcoin, actually? Because I find it rather fascinating, especially the debate that's going on within uh, libertarian and Austrian economic circles right now. Sure. Give us your take on it. Well, first of all, I think like everybody else, I like to see the development of something like Bitcoin. I really like the idea of competing currencies. Uh, and I think the people behind Bitcoin, of course, have the best of intentions. And lots of people that are getting into Bitcoin are getting into it for the right reasons. It's not the dollar. It's not the euro. It's not the yen. You know, it's not a government issued fiat currency. Nevertheless, I have some problems with Bitcoin myself that other people in the hard money camp have. First of all, money comes to the market and emerges on the market. It isn't like someone just says, hey, this is money. Let's start using it. And I think that the reason that people are going into Bitcoin is exactly because of what it isn't. It's not the dollar, it's not the euro, it's not the yen. Whereas if we look at something like precious metals, the gold and silver, yeah, we can argue they don't have intrinsic value from a theoretical economic perspective, and that's true. Nevertheless, they have a 6,000 year history of being money, of being desired for people, of being desired by people. People want the precious metals because of what they are. And I really feel that Bitcoin is sort of taking a lot of the interest that would be in the metals and, and diverting it. Like I said, that's great in the idea that it's, it's a competing currency, but nevertheless, I don't think it's the competing currency that does have the ability to break the state's monopoly on the issuance of money. Very well said. Plus, they can use uh, the unknown providence of this they can use the takedown of Bitcoin to then demonize and taint the idea of true independent cryptocurrencies. That's all I'm saying is yeah, this may not have a happy ending, and I'm not in some cult uh, just saying it's perfect. We've got to bow down to it. We've got to have some concerns. Investing in anything, uh, especially something brand new and speculative, is dangerous. And you hit the nail on the head right there, Alex. There, it, that is the problem with Bitcoin from, more mac from a more macro level. If we're introducing the idea of competing currencies, and then one of these competing currencies ends up in a bubble, ends up with a lot of people putting a lot of money into it. Like I heard recently that you know folks were saying that Bitcoin could go to a hundred thousand dollars a coin or even a million dollars a coin, people are going to start getting into this thing because, wow, it's starting to shoot up in value. I need to get into it before the, the train leaves the station. And then all of a sudden the thing crashes. Then the statists are going to say, see, we told you money is way too important for the market to handle. Only the government should be handling money. And it will, it will uh, uh, as you say, demonize the entire idea of competing currencies. Now, shifting gears out of that, uh, let's look at the TSA because your comments made national news, and I think more people should speak up. This is our country. The TSA's own internal documents that came out a few months ago admit they've never stopped a real terrorist. Uh, now they're running checkpoints on the highways and are becoming a federal police force. What's your personal take on it, and what have been your experiences? Well, the TSA as an organization, as an agency, is in standing violation of the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, which says that we should be free to go as we please. There should not be unreasonable searches and seizures without due process of law, without a warrant being issued. Showing up in an airport to get on a commercial airplane is not probable cause. And what the TSA does, despite the fact that, again, you, know, you look at um, 
TSA agents as individuals, and many of them, of course, are, are very decent, decent people trying to do a good job, trying to do what they think is right. Nevertheless, the organization itself is a means by which you know, the, the government is basically getting into our business when it doesn't belong there. The only contact that we should have with federal authorities is when we are in the process of committing a crime or we are thought to be about to commit a crime. And that's about it. And this idea that they should be questioning us, that, of course, with like the NSA, that they should be listening to everything that we do, that everything uh, goes into a federal database, that they should just be in our business in general, as they are, is very dangerous to freedom. And unfortunately, it is indicative of the fact that many Americans have traded their liberty for security, and we were warned against doing that by the founding fathers. Sure. And again, if you just joined us, Glenn Jacobs, known as Kane, one of the top wrestlers in the world, is here and he is uh, talking about being free. And it, it's so asinine to claim that uh, government can keep us safe. And, and we knew that they would start moving out of the airports, onto the roads and into the malls and the sports stadiums. The idea that the feds have to be everywhere where a bad person might try to hurt you while they try to keep the individual from being armed to protect ourselves, that is obviously the real answer to terrorism or crime, uh, is just a transparent power grab. What is your view of the, the dictatorial move of Obama particularly uh, and uh, on so many issues bypassing the Constitution? And in your gut, what historic point do you think we're at are, are we near the tipping point? Is there an awakening? Uh, what does your gut tell you? Because you come off as a really informed, well-researched, smart guy. I think we are close to a tipping point. I mean, of course, we can't predict economics. You know, a lot of us thought in 2007, 2008, that was really the beginning of the end, right? Uh, but the world economy is very complex, and there are all sorts of different dynamics at play. So we don't know how long things can go on economically. They could go on for a few years. They could go on for a few months. We have no idea. And there's probably equal chance of it either. I do believe that we are at a tipping point, though, uh, because I, I, there's an undercurrent that people are just tired of all this. You know, freedom and liberty means being able to live your life as you want to live it, so long as you're not hurting anybody else. What is wrong with that? I, I, that's that's what I don't understand about people that disagree with libertarian philosophy. How in the world could you say that people should not be able to live their life as they wish if they're not hurting you? And that's for everybody around the world. I think that's what everybody wants. And we're seeing more and more, by the, especially the federal government, moving in areas that they've never been in before, moving there very vigorously. And uh, yeah, so I, I think we are at a tipping point. I think our job is to educate as many people as possible because I don't, I don't think that there is any way to stop what's going to happen. I do see that we're going to have, I think that we're going to have horrendous economic times coming up. The bright spot in all that is yes, it, it, that will allow for a paradigm change. So we have to educate people before we get there to understand what the real problems were, what caused the problems, and how we solve the problems on the other side. And in the end, I think that once we get through this crisis, we will see a golden age of liberty and freedom. I, I really do believe I that. agree. Glenn Jacobs is our guest. What, well, what freaks me out is when I read globalist white papers that we've uh, displayed here on the air, they admit all of this and their collectivist model is going to fail, but they still believe they should be in control as kind of the brain bugs on top of the little hive ants or bees as they see us. And they want to bring in a total state and this computer system that they believe will finally make collectivism work uh, as they say it. Uh, but really, we've just been usurped and conquered by people uh, using fraud and uh, criminal, criminal uh, philosophies that aren't really based in reality, and when I see all over the country bills introduced and moves to ban homeschooling, and when I see the persecution of gun owners and the persecution of free speech, I just hope we can hold off a violent revolution so that we can just restore our republic somehow peacefully. What does what does the cane in you uh, think about all this? I guess cane would be a fan of tyranny. Uh, yeah, yeah, he probably would be. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I'm not. And <laughs> yeah, you know, but violent revolution, of course, is not the answer. And that will only bring more problems. As we've seen throughout history, when, when there have been violent revolutions, we have to look at what comes next and often what replaces what, what 
the current paradigm is something far worse. So I, I really do believe that education is the key, getting people to understand the problems, getting people to understand what caused the problems, and getting people to understand how we solve the problems. And solving the problems is, does not mean giving big government more power. It means giving big government less power, downsizing the government as much as we possibly can. You have absolutely just borne in on the heart of it. Revolutions don't ever work except in the case of 1776. You can count on one hand revolutions that made things better. Usually it's a French revolution and go from bad to worse because the fundamental cultural rot is still there. Our revolution was successful because it was so so fundamentally pro-liberty that even though it was never attained fully, it was the idea of reaching out in an evolution towards greater and greater freedom, greater and greater empowerment that historically uplifts people, free association, where those that rise are those that have better ideas or more honorable instead of the king rat big government model. So we need to have a restoration and a cultural velvet revolution against their tyranny. That is the system that is unstoppable. Ron Paul says that an idea whose time has come can't be stopped. An army can't stop it. It's more powerful than an army. Once you're able to change hearts and minds, uh, you're able to do tremendous things. And, and that's one thing I found in my own life. You know, I may not be able to control everything that goes out on out in the rest of the world. But what I can control is how I think about things, educating myself, trying to... Get, enlighten other people or at least give them the ability to think about things differently at least give them a different perspective and that has made tremendous differences in my own life and uh, i think for the population at large that is the key is to to at least expose people to a different paradigm to show them that there is a red pill and what we can't make them take it but nevertheless we can at least show them that the thing exists and that's a step in the right direction Exactly. Ron Paul, as you know, he was on just a few days ago, it points out that the key time is during the collapse. The socialists and communists want to use Cloward and Piven to collapse things and then pose as the saviors to get their vice grips into us that much tighter and, and, and enslave us. But if we point out their system failed, not free market capitalism, but that it's crony insider capitalism coupled with socialism that the uh, robber barons are pushing, it's game over for them. They want to use class warfare when it's Warren Buffett, the biggest recipient of banker bailout money, lobbying to raise taxes on the middle class. Yeah, Alex, I wrote an article for the Daily Caller, and the title of it, this is a while back, the title of it was, Does the Free Market Cause Wealth Inequality? And it does not. Of course, there are always going to be people that are going to be wealthier than other people because they have different and better talents, or they're smarter, or they have better luck, or they just plain work harder. But what causes wealth inequality is big government. What has caused the explosion in the wealth gap that we've seen since the financial crisis in 2007, 2008, is the fact that the Federal Reserve has pumped trillions of dollars out into the economy you and I haven't gotten it. The middle class has not gotten it. The people on Wall Street have gotten it. They've used that to buy assets at lower prices. And then as more and more people, of course, buy the assets, those assets go up in price. That's what causes wealth inequality. The free market actually narrows the wealth gap because we can all produce in a way that we want You're to. Right. And we can all become as big as we want to be. And there's no debating that. Socialism, fascism, every form of collectivism creates living hell. And it always does, and I'm sick of the collectivists telling me, oh, British healthcare is great, it's socialist, when I got people that work for me that live in England, I watch C-SPAN and see the parliamentary hearings, it is a hellhole. Very good friend that grew up in Canada, he was told all through school that the Canadian health system was the best, best in the world. Of course, until he needed to get an MRI and had to wait six months, but he was able to cross the border. He lived in Toronto. He was able to come to Detroit and get the MRI that day. There's a problem there. But yeah, we a lot of folks around the world, unfortunately, have been propagandized to believe that socialism, which is really, in many respects, communism light, is the ultimate political arrangement for human beings. It's not. It does lead to mass poverty, and it leads to misery. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's just incredible. Al Gore says the North Pole, uh, the North Pole melted. It didn't. 
Al Gore says socialism's great. It's horrible. These people know they're liars, and they've all gotten rich off of collectivizing the stuff that they basically control and skim off the top of. Now, again, we've only got about seven minutes left with you. I hope you'll come on as things develop around the country. I know you're helping organize libertarians to run for office and take our country back. Uh, I've been asking the questions here. Uh, give us your take on what you think is most important, other news items uh, that you think need to be discussed. Again, there's you know there's so much stuff. Um, the, the Federal Reserve to me is the most important issue that we deal with. It's hundred year anniversary is Monday. Yeah, yeah, and, and Janet Yellen, of course, is going it is as the new Fed chairman. The other day, the Fed just said that they're going to what taper about ten billion dollars a month. They're still pumping seventy five billion dollars a month into the economy. And if you look at their balance sheet, it's more than that. And the reason the Fed is so important is because it empowers big government. People don't like to pay taxes. When taxes go up, they tend not to vote for the people who are in office. So the politicians and the central bankers figure out a way to circumnavigate that. We'll print the money. That will buy the services that people expect expect from the government and then people pay for it through price inflation but of course because the price inflation comes later and because it's hidden because it's generally embedded in the price of products we can blame that on the market we can blame that on business people we can blame that on you know greedy oil companies or whatever so to me that's the most important issue is the federal reserve we can't talk about that enough we have to audit the federal reserve you know bernie sanders showed he, he, this guy's a socialist and he was able to come out and show that the Fed lent out $17 trillion in 2007, 2008. You and I didn't get it. Who got it? The people on Wall Street. But we wouldn't have even known about it if, if he hadn't done that investigation because the Fed had lax transparency. And I absolutely think that if the American people could see what the Fed really does and who benefits from their policies. Sure. They realize that all this stuff about stimulating the economy has nothing to do with, with stimulating the economy. It's about stimulating the bonuses on Wall Street. That's right. Glenn Jacobs uh, joins us here, known as the wrestler Kane, and absolutely uh, on target when it comes to the reality of the economics we face. There's a reason since 1913, 100 years ago, this week or next week, um, the, the 23rd, d during the Christmas recess, they snuck it through, fraudulently gave us the income tax to pay uh, that debt. It allows them to manage and manipulate the economy. It allows them to pick winners and losers. It allows them to give themselves free money or at 0% interest. And that's how you've had this criminal consolidation of the ultra-rich who then gang up and demonize the middle class because that's their only political opposition. They want to make us poor on record and now you see since 100 years ago a 98 percent devaluation in dollar buying power and it's accelerating now on the last two percent to devalue it on beef prices the stock market is overinflated it's not really 15,000 it just affects everything it's a giant fraud and it's important when it all comes down that we don't let them set up a world government with a whole new Ponzi scheme of SDRs, as they're calling for, or their own fiat currency into another level. It's important to bring them to justice. Understanding monetary policy is very important. I uh, follow Kyle Bass, uh, who did some great work in the lead up to the housing bubble. And his prognosis is that Japan is going to be next to be hit with the, uh, with oh, yeah. the debt bomb because of their demographics and because of the fact that they've been printing money like crazy too. Then it goes back to Europe. Then in, you know, again, you can't really put a time frame on this, but he says in, in four to six years, uh, we'll see the debt problems emerge here in the U.S. And, you know, folks, that that's an enormous problem because if, if we can't sell our debt anymore. If the Fed has to, which is already doing a great extent, but if the Fed has to completely buy the government's debt and has to monetize like crazy, if the dollar per chance loses its reserve currency status, that is if other countries around the world prefer not to trade in dollars or to hold dollars as backing for their own currencies, we're in a lot of trouble because then all the inflation that this is what's happening now is when the fed prints money the inflation doesn't necessarily stay here in the u.s it goes into the capital markets like the stock market but sure. it also goes around the world if it doesn't do that and it stays here we will see a massive perhaps a hyperinflationary event and that will tear society apart and that's something we should sure. be aware of of course and in closing in the two minutes we've got left we've been proven right that it's an international conspiracy 
uh, that LIBOR was staged. Even the Rolling Stone admits it's a conspiracy. So that's all over. Instead of getting an apology, I get demonized by the ADL and Southern Bravery Law Center and MSNBC because they're bought and paid for to try to block us ever getting our country back. Our country's been usurped. We have to admit it's a corporate, corporatist, anti-free market group. Let's talk about uh, World Wrestling Entertainment briefly. Uh, what's the average political makeup there? Are people waking up there? Are more people going to speak out there? Where do you think that's going? Because you've used your fame to help promote uh, liberty. Uh, are other folks going to be joining you? And are you? And what are you doing running for political office? I have no plans to run for political office now. Uh, maybe in the future I might do that. As far as my colleagues, you know, Alex, the reason that most people don't pay attention to stuff is they're just trying to make a living, man. They're, they're busy. trying to pay taxes. They're trying to take care of their families. You know, they're trying to deal with all the stuff that life gives you in general. And then on top of that, we have this enormous paradigm shift, which I believe is on the horizon. Um, but, you know, like most people, I think our guys, they, they do. There's a libertarian streak. And as far as you know, oh, yeah. we don't really like taxes that much because we're uh, we have to pay our own taxes. We're independent contractors, which means that we have to write a check out to the IRS and nothing will bring your religion faster than actually having to sit down and sign a big old check over to the... Uh, well to said. Hey, listen, you got to promise to come back and next time you're in Austin, come in studio. All right, man, I will. Thanks for having me on. Thanks a lot. Powerful interview. Symbols are powerful and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty.